Well, hello there and good morning. My name is Kenneth Bacor, host of the EV Revolution Show. As you already know, if you're watching me, thanks very much for tuning in. Yes, it's morning my time. It's early in the morning that I thought I'd get this review in because I do need to return this vehicle tomorrow because uh, I'm super excited to be able to have driven for a few days the brand new 2025 Volvo EX30. This, of course, is Volvo's uh, another all-electric entry into their lineup, which is moving forward with electrification, um, fully electrified at some point. You know, all these OEMs tend to be a little bit for sooner, a little bit quicker, 2030, 2035, whatever. But Volvo continues to develop and push out all electrified products. First off, I want to start by thanking Volvo Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle for a week. It's been really fun to drive this thing around. I haven't put it through really anything hard this week, to be honest with you, in its paces. Uh, just by normal kind of back and forth to work at around town driving and uh, be able to tell you my thoughts and what I think of this vehicle. So sit back, relax, and let me spend a few minutes telling you about the EX30. All right, so what's exciting about the EX30 here from Volvo, as I mentioned, is it's brand new for them as a product line launched here in the later latter parts of 2024. This is a 2025 model year. And, you know, according to Volvo, this is their smallest ever SUV. So this is kind of the, the smallest level SUV platform that you can get from Volvo. You know, as they say, big electric performance in a small package. Eh, you know, I would say very good electric performance in a small package. I'm not sure about big. Um, you know, one thing you do like about Volvo is their design language and their choice of colors and palettes and materials and all that kind of stuff. And, and there is a really good build quality in these. Now, um, even though I believe that these vehicles are built in China today, uh, we, we've seen time and time again with vehicles that are built there that the quality is extremely high. I mean, lots of Teslas now are coming from Shanghai in here into North America and they're doing quite well. So just in my few days of driving, the quality and, and just the, the types of materials, the use of it has been really good. And I'll show you the interior and talk more about that. But from an exterior styling pers perspective, this is all Volvo, right? And it's, it was designed really to have the smallest footprint of any, any Volvo car to date, according to Volvo. And they use a lot of renewable and recyclable materials in new ways in this vehicle. But when you look at it, you have that traditional angles from the Volvo. You, you look at it, it, see, it looks like a Volvo, even though it's got the emblems on and the badging. It's got the Thor headlights, uh, of course, treatment, uh, Thor hammer uh, treatment that they talk about a lot. Uh, it's just a really nice compact package from a looks perspective. Um, the C-pillar is probably the thickest part of this, which is, which is a little wide for a C-pillar, but with the blind spot monitoring through these frameless side mirrors, um, it actually really does well in alerting drivers to uh, vehicles in your blind spots. Um, I'm still big on shoulder checking and you can get some visibility out that second uh, rear window. Um, but having those sensors is nice as well. So I think everything just flows really nicely in this. The wheels are pushed to the corner so you can maximize interior room and everything is, uh, uh, is just planted in this vehicle as well. It's a really, really nice uh, designed vehicle from the outside. A little the badging and numbers says to, it doesn't really kind of pop out to say that I'm electric. You know, you got to look for it a little bit on this. You got to understand that the EX is the name, the, the, the new naming convention that Volvo is using on their platform. So the former XC40 and the former C40 are now becoming the EX40. And uh, I think the CX40, if I've got that right, or, I could, or it could be the EC40. That one I got to double check. I'm not sure. Uh, but you get where they're going. Of course, the EX90, the, the big brother, the three row coming out of this as well. That's uh, coming up very, very soon, if not already in some countries. Again, that's the kind of nomenclature that Volvo is moving forward to highlight their electrified platform. And I think from an overall looks and standpoint, they've done really well with this vehicle. It looks great. Now, from a power plant, they come in a couple different styles. This vehicle is the rear-wheel drive vehicle, which is most likely the one that I would opt for if I was going for this model of vehicle because it is the longest range vehicle. That single motor puts out 268 horsepower and 253 pound-feet of torque. That's more than enough to get you going. Uh, I think zero to 60s or something like in this uh, six and a half to seven seconds, which is more than enough. Again, you don't need these things to race around ample speed to get you up the highway, get you out of trouble as well. Uh, now the battery on this, uh, these, uh, the motor is powered by a 69 kilowatt hour battery, um, which is uh, a good size battery. EPA rated range on this is 420 kilometers. I'm seeing probably closer to about 330 right now. 
We've had the temperatures drop here in Southern Ontario uh, this week since I've had the vehicle. So that's kind of what I'm seeing now, more than adequate for daily use and even around the city. Um, so, you know, definitely enough power, a good sized battery and enough range to uh, do everyday use. And when we look at frunk storage, so this uh, Volvo does believe in, in frunks, uh, like some OEMs don't. It's got a very small frunk, I'll pop it open here. Um, it's only about seven liters or about a quarter of a cubic feet, 0.25 cubic feet, did I say that right? So it's enough to put probably a charging cable, your mobile charging cable, and maybe something else in there, but that's really what it's designed for, is put that cable over here, get it out of the way, or, or maybe some windshield washer fluid or whatever, that'll fit in there. That's about it, a couple of books. There's not really a whole lot going on there. But it is nice to see that they've done a frunk and that they've made this minimalistic and clean from a front perspective. All you need to do is know where the windshield washer fluid is. You pop that open, put that in. That's it. There's nothing else to check or look here because that'll all be taken care of by your routine service intervals whenever they are. All right, when we look at the boot space, now one thing I do like about this, I had to search the first time I got this car. How do you open the there's nothing here. I'd open the rear boot, but there's just this little button right in the middle here. You just push that and then it powers open. So it takes a little bit to hunt for it and find it, but you will find it eventually. And you know, it's got an okay size boot, but behind the, the second row as standard, you do get about 318 liters of, of cargo space, which is about 11.2 cubic feet. That's an okay size. But when you put the rear seats down, that's when you'll expand your room to 904 liters or 32 cubic feet. Um, and that also includes uh, 61 liters of underfloor space. So similar to Tesla, where you lift up the mat here, if I can get that mat, there we go. There's a hatch and there's a little bit of a boot space here. Now here it's got a sunshade, it's got mud flaps, uh, it's got all kinds of stuff in here that they have the mobile connector. So it's got about seven inches, uh, six, seven inches of depth here of stuff in it that they haven't unpacked because this is a brand new vehicle. So it's pretty deceiving how big it is for a small SUV. So good job out of over there. Now, as I said, this is a subcomp subcompact SUV. And so the rear is going to be, I think where there's anything that's given up on this vehicle a little bit is the rear seat room and rear room. It's gonna be adequate for four adults, five at a pinch, of course, but it's gonna be a little tight. Um, so as you can see, the door opens okay enough to get in, but the opening isn't so wide. It does slope back a little bit here. I do like that the, the roof doesn't slope back too aggressively, so you do maintain some interior headroom for the height there. But it is a little tight, so I'm about 5'7". I have the seat set where I have it. And as you can see, it's taken me a little effort to get into this vehicle. It's not uncomfortable once you're in. It's just going to take a little bit of topsy-turvying and twisting uh, for some people to get in and out of this vehicle. Once you're in and stationary, it's comfortable. You're belted in. I don't believe there's a center armrest on this particular uh, option package, but I believe you can get one. So again, four for sure. Five would be in a pinch. You'd have to really squeeze in here because it's not that wide of a back. Um, I can almost touch the, the, the other side door with my right arm extended. Um, so just to give you a sense of space. So this is definitely a four seater, a four person. I would say some smaller, you know, a family with a couple of kids, maybe a dog, that kind of thing in here, but you know, it will work for adults uh, only. Just be uh, advised that somebody is, you know, over like approaching six feet in the front, you're gonna have very, very minimal leg room here in the back. It's gonna be very squished. So you need to take those ergonomics into consideration when you're looking at a vehicle like this, understand what your needs are for your family or yourself um, and your environment that you're in and, and, and think about that when you're looking at this car. The front, there's ample room for everybody in my opinion, there's no issue there, it's just the back gets tight. Now for charging, this is your charging port back here, similar to what we see in a lot of products. This currently has your CCS standard combo package here, which is what we're seeing, um, I believe. Volvo is now starting to ship the NACS adapter for these 25 model years. I don't have one yet. They were telling me they weren't going to get them till probably later this month in November, but they're imminently coming. So you will be able to take this vehicle at, to a Tesla supercharger and charge it. And that's great because it opens up an availability of networks that um, it more than doubles what's available on the CCS side today, in my opinion. 
When we talk about charging, um, from an AC perspective, it's up to 11 kilowatts, so decent. It'll support the 48 amps, 11 kilowatts. And for DC fast charging, it'll support up to 175 kilowatts, which they're saying a zero to, or 10 to 80% in about 28 minutes or half an hour. So definitely it has the ability to road trip and with the um, use of Tesla superchargers, just opens up the availability of where to find a charge. All right, so if you're looking at the interior, one thing I wanted to point out is this does have a card activation activation system similar to Tesla where you could just tap a, a credit card to unlock the, the vehicle and drive it and lock it again. So it does offer that. Also has a key fob. There is no physical key. There might be a, a emergency uh, key slot here somewhere. Just trying to look. I don't see one behind uh, the door handle here. Um, so it looks like there may not be. Um, sometimes they do offer those hardware keys, but it looks like it doesn't in this case. But that is something that we don't see on a lot of vehicles is that tap. So the traditional door handles, uh, the frameless mirrors, which Volvo always uh, likes to hype, they actually work really well. They offer really good visibility. These ones don't seem to tint um, as much as some of the others, but they do work quite well. Uh, looking at the front interior, got a nice use of materials. Again, there are some different packages that you can uh, buy from interior colors to coordinate, depending on the trim and the model level. This kind of floating armrest here with these deep door pockets. Uh, the nice use of material, uh, easy door handle, open things up. As you can see, no buttons, right? Everything's, everything's thrown to the center console here. So you won't find buttons on the doors. Everything is a manual lever and off you go. You've got these really nice funky door handles with some uh, matching color palette, some badging and all. Now this has some winter mats in it. A uh, nice use of material on the seats. You got to mix, uh, again, you can mix up the colors here. I do like the way they look and they're very comfortable. This has multiple power way, including lumbar. Uh, I don't believe the passenger has lumbar, but you might probably get that as an option. You would have to check. But again, a very functional, but the first thing you'll notice is a minimalistic, again, interior. Similar to Tesla and similar to other vehicles that are taking that approach, uh, they want minimalism. So if I get in the vehicle here, show you the rest of the interior. So we have that minimalistic steering wheel, right? I mean, everything, there's not much going on here. Um, that red light, any red light you see is the monitoring system for the driver um, to make sure that they don't fall asleep. You've got wiper controls, turn signals, and your gear shift is here. All right, and like Tesla, there is no start-stop button in the Volvo. You just step on the brake and it starts. Um, basically, the vehicles are ready to drive. Um, so I'm just continuing with narration here because something happened to my, uh, my uh, audio on this video I was doing. So there's the 11.3-inch uh, portrait-based uh, display. It's nice and crisp and clear. Uh, it's a really decent uh, uh, display for infotainment system. Um, as you can see, it's got a Google-based uh, system on it which is standard with the Volvo platforms. It's fairly responsive as well, um, has all your, all your instrumentation as far as all your functionality for wipers. Uh, there are buttons on the stock for wipers, but you can uh, play around with some different settings. You've got your lights, uh, all kinds of different stuff that's in there on the software side, including your HVAC. They all work pretty good. Sometimes trying to do something minimal as just turn the lights on can be a couple of steps, which I find a little annoying. Uh, there might be an ability to make shortcuts. I haven't figured that out. I didn't play a, uh, spend enough time with the infotainment system. But, you know, as you can see, the, the, the HVAC systems come up. Uh, this does have a winterized package where you have heated steering wheel, heated front seats as well. Uh, I don't believe the rear seats are heated. Uh, but decent HVAC controls. It has a nice uh, filtering system as well. It tells you how the air quality is in the vehicle. So it's a nice display, funky looking kind of vents on here. But again, very uh, modern, yet um, a really clean look. And of course your speedometer is in the upper left as I'm circling there where the gear shift indicator is. So just like Tesla, that's your speedometer. That's all you see. And like everything, you get used to it. It becomes muscle memory on this vehicle. Um, it's just knowing where everything is and all the different, uh, all the different settings. Now look at it, got the glove box, which was something different. I like that. It's in the center there. It's not that big, but it's very, a uh, very nice location, a very practical, putting sunglasses, keys, your registration, your ID, that kind of stuff. So it's easy to, to dig out. 
um, not too complex. I really do like that. You don't have to lean all the way over to the other side, especially when you're on your own. So that's a nice little touch. And they, they, uh, Volvo has got put some thinking into the interior here. They've done a pretty good job of, of the different designs and make it look cool. Now on the center console, we have the dual cup holder. And what's neat about it is that it can recess into the console. So that console doesn't open just an armrest there. It's all, it's all uh, softer padding. And what you have is that cup holder. And a cup holder can be a notch in a couple of ways. It can go in and just expose one a cup holder or you can push it all the way in and it slides in and, and hides away and that's so they can open up that really big storage area in the middle and that's we're seeing a trend there on vehicles now where OEMs are like to put those bigger uh, under the console storage here you don't have to fish under it's all open and I do like that you can put your uh, phones there for wireless charging there's some uh, USB plugs somewhere under there under my stuff and then it's got this cavernous uh, back part to the uh, to the storage where there's a removable bin, and I'll show you that. Um, uh, I, I think I might have showed you that before. It's just a removable bin that you can use with the back seat. And then again, when you want to activate the uh, cup holders, you just uh, push that out, and it comes out, and back and forth it goes. Uh, as well, one thing I want to mention is that those controls on the center console, those two buttons, are for the windows. So there's no buttons on the doors. Those two uh, buttons are for the windows, uh, they're for the front, and there's a button that says rear, like the ID4, when you press that, you are able to control the rear buttons. So it's two buttons that'll control four windows, if that makes some sense, and it's the same setup in the back seat. Um, we got a frameless rear view mirror, which is nice. Uh, it really doesn't impact any visibility. You've got some uh, map lights and, and some uh, connectivity stuff. You've got your vanities, uh, some, uh, some vanities here with the mirrors. Um, about sun visors, what can I tell you? There's no light in the mirror, but whatever. It, uh, that's the way it is. Uh, so all, all in all, a very well-equipped and nice interior. I like the looks. I like the energy and the vibe that it gives out on it. Um, it's really a fun-looking vehicle, and the quality, again, and workmanship uh, shows quite well. So in driving the X30, I'm going to keep this really short. This has been a quiet, capable, and comfortable vehicle. You've heard me say that before, and this just has it in spades. It's quiet. The suspension is very comfortable. It will handle uh, most road stuff quite easily. It won't, won't, won't have a lot to worry about there. Um, again, with the single motor, I've got more than enough acceleration to get going and get me out of trouble. Nice ergonomics, comfortable seating positions, good visibility, especially with all the ADAS sensors, with your blind spot, your adaptive cruise, your emergency braking, all the ADAS stuff is in this vehicle as well from a suite. The infotainment, everything ergonomically is easy to reach, easy to access, easy to control. And once you figure out the controls, it's pretty straightforward to, to you know, a lot of them are set and forget to utilize. Uh, the driving has really been what surprised me. It's so quiet and comfortable and so easy to maneuver. You, you know, it's just it's just nimble. Um, and I like that. Again, that size warrants the ability to kind of maneuver this uh, around city streets, find parking spots. And it does have some uh, parking assist features as well if you need that. And just overall easy driving experience. It's quiet, very capable, as I mentioned, uh, even on the highway, good acceleration and good use of controls. By the way, the sound system, the Harman Kardon in here, they've done a great job. This is a fantastic sound system. It's really, really good. I would put it right up there with Tesla's. It's that good, folks, so I would try it. Again, the nice uh, panoramic roof, all the, all the niceties here, use of materials. It's just a comfortable car. So from a driving, they get an A-plus on this. This is really, really nice um, for the space that it provides and for the, the vehicle class that it is. They've hit a home run here. And just wanted to add on my mileage, I haven't really had an opportunity to put a ton of mileage on this. Uh, I'm at around uh, 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. We've had some cooler temps this week. I'm at about uh, 70 kilometers of driving at about 77% state of charge um, after topping it up. So it's giving me a range of about 325 to 330 kilometers right now at EPA range. And that's probably fairly accurate because of these cool temperatures. So not the most efficient vehicle, nor do they claim to be. Um, but again, for most people that are driving 50, 60, 70, 80 kilometers a day back and forth to work, even 100, this has more than enough capability to get you to work at home. And then you can plug it in and charge uh, and supports a decent uh, overnight charging and all that kind of stuff. So uh, again, they've done a good job and uh, it, not much more to say there. Well, I hope you enjoyed all that information on this 2025 EX30 from Volvo from a price perspective. The Volvo has aggressively priced those, but remember, the Volvo still is a luxury brand, so it's going to be a little bit more than you might find in a comparative brand 
at this size and and for what you get now there's a lot of options you get in this vehicle you know blind spot monitoring uh, the power seats um, the Harman uh, Kardon uh, syst uh, sound system is fantastic in this vehicle so I have to credit them for putting a lot of great features and, and offerings into this small package at a what I would say is an aggressive price for Volvo MSRP starts on the core unit single motor at $53,700 Canadian. This one as tested is, is $59,100 before your freight, PDI, taxes, blah, 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 blah. Uh, again, single motor, long, longest range variant that you're going to get, and then the prices go up from there. They all qualify currently for the federal ISEV rebate program, so you get your $5,000 off of that. Um, so again, if you're in a province that has additional incentives, like Quebec, even though they're going away soon, I would encourage you to, to strongly encourage you to go look at one of these if you're interested in this marketplace. Because as I said in the driving, it's a nice, comfortable, quiet, really smooth ride on this. I, there's nothing I could really fault this vehicle for from a ride quality and for just an overall getting in and going and doing things. It's extremely capable and very comfortable. Uh, it doesn't float, you know, like a Lincoln or anything like that, but it's just, it's just got a really nice package to it. You know, again, the Achilles seal on this is probably the rear seat room, just a little small similar to to the Kona in my opinion for you know, when the original Kona came out that the rear seat it was functional but it was a little tight and this is the same boat but you know you get everything else you get a really nice build quality you get nice looks you get nice um, presentation of, of the materials and all the controls are easy you get a lot of bells and whistles with this vehicle at that price point so definitely is a recommended um, product from me uh, on the Volvo EX30. I was super excited to finally get a chance to drive this for several days after seeing it about a year or so ago here in Toronto when they did a, a static launch party downtown and I was excited to see it then. So really good that Volvo is, is has built a product like this. Of course the EX90 is going to get more of the attention because everybody's into larger SUVs. That's just the world we live in. Um, so when I get one of those in the next few months, I will do a review on that as well. That's their three row uh, SUV and that'll be the all electric. So again, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this vehicle. Thanks very much for watching. Um, always encourage feedback. You can email me, all the contact information is here. That's the best way. I'm on Twitter, but you know, email me is the best thing folks. I don't really do a lot more on Twitter. Um, I'm not very happy with the way, the way X is and, and the platform that it is and, and who owns it and how it's run. So you'll see a lot less stuff from me on Twitter as, 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 as a medium. Uh, I'm just really sticking to doing my videos and getting content out there. So if you want to reach me, email is the best way. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, I want to thank my Patreon, Patreon supporters. They are near and dear to my heart. I have had some that have been with me for several years now, and I want to always humbly thank you for that. Um, and, and if you're interested in helping me out, you can check out uh, the link as well for Patreon. But not, no, I'm not going to push you on that, subbing, all that stuff. You guys know what to do anyway. Hope you enjoyed this. Love to hear your comments on it. And again, everybody, uh, thanks for watching and stay safe. And I will see you next time when I see you. That's how we roll. Bye-bye.